One of the things that we're often asked is about the, uh, the magic of the algorithm and what really, really goes on behind the scenes at Google. So we thought we would address that um, today in as much detail as we're, we're able to by sharing um, a bit about our product roadmap and exactly what we're up to behind the scenes. So without further ado, let me introduce um, my colleague, Alan Livingston. Alan is one of our product managers and will walk you through exactly what we're up to and I hope we'll have the chance for a couple of questions at the end. So Alan, over to you. Thank you, Sarah. My name is Alan Livingston and I am a product manager on our advertising products here in London. And today I'm gonna to step away from that and I'm gonna to try to, I think the name of the session is a peek behind the curtain. So I'm gonna to try to tell you a little bit about how we develop our products and the thinking that goes on into them. And so I think one of the things that, that anyone can tell is obviously we have a, a whole series of different products. They change all the time. People use them in ways that, that we wouldn't expect. And as a product manager, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. And you know, I, I, I found the, the talk by Charlie very interesting. I mean, I used to think of myself as young, but I now, I, I, I really figured that that stopped being true about five, 10 years ago. Um, and so basically, just to hear all the different ways that products are used, you can't really implement kind of a top-down, forward-looking idea. There's no five-year plan where, you know, we're going to have these different things because we don't know how the internet is going to evolve. And so when you look at how do we, how do we organize all this, we, we have just our core mission, which I think a lot of you, probably all of you would, would know about, organizing the world's information, making it universally accessible and useful. And so we look at, well, what does that mean? And then when we, we have you know, all these different products, how do they tie in? So obviously search, and, and uh, you know, image search and web search and some of these other things, it's pretty clear how they tie in together. But then when you have things like Chrome or Android or all these other different products, well, how do they, do they fit in? They seem really disconnected. But actually, when you look behind the scenes and how we put this all together, they really are connected. This is, it's baked in the DNA, that, that core mission. And so our, the basically to achieve our, our goal of organizing the world's information, um, you know, the founders are very fond of saying that that's a 100-year mission, that there's, that there's an awful lot of work. Google's, I think, 11 years old now, and so we have 89 years left to, to, try, to, to try to do that. I mean, I mean, it's a huge task, and then as, as the internet evolves and as more information becomes available, certainly then you need new ways of organizing. And so it, it all sounds very chaotic, and so the real question is, well, how do we think about this, and how do we, how do we progress? How do we make our products? And we just go by some simple principles as sort of the starting point. And so one of the things we try to do is we try to develop good ideas. And we don't really worry about how they fit in. We can worry about that later. Okay. We also, um, also want to launch early and let users test our ideas. And I think the panel had mentioned that. So I'm a product manager, and of course, that means I don't know what users want. Right? I mean, I have my own agenda, and I would think, you know, I sit in the office, and whatever other product managers or engineers might like is what I think users want. But when users use the products, you would find out that that's not the case at all. And so what you need to do is you need to have the products out in front of users as soon as possible. You don't want to spend years and years developing. And the thing about the web and all the new technologies is that allows companies to do this, to experiment quickly. And, and this is key to, to understanding users and to really capturing you know, what do users want, what, what do they want to do this year, what do they want to do next year, this kind of thing. The other thing, the other principle is to always put users first. This is, this is key. This is what the insight that the founders had when they were in their dorm room was, you know, we need to put users first. And actually, I was working for another search engine at the time. I'm not going to name what it is. They had a dorm room. We had a building. Um, and our CEO didn't want to get into web search because he thought there was no money in it. Right? So we were, we were in enterprise search. And he said, you know, there's no money in web search. Let's not do that. And so that's the kind of thinking that we don't do. We want to really think of what do the users want to do, and let's try to solve a need. Okay, and then you can worry about everything later. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just give you a, a series of product demos that, that'll try to capture that. Um, and then I think if we have time, and I'm not eating into your lunch too much, then um, we'll have a Q&A session. OK, so we'll see what happened. So I closed all of Chewy's tabs, and then I think he closed all of mine. So <laughs> that's fine. OK. Um, and so the first thing I'm just going to do is see if we have a connection. Um, and what I w I'm going to start with, if, if I get a, a page here, is just basically talking a little bit about web search and 
how much it changes. Now, it doesn't change in, in large ways. It changes in incremental ways as we learn about how users um, behave and what they want, okay? And so, basically, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna sign out as, well, I'll just do a search. Okay, so I'm just gonna bring up a generic search here. Um, I don't know, it's just um, basically a meaningless term here because this is, this is sort of your old fashioned, relatively old fashioned search results. You see essentially just a list of, a list of results. Now you'll notice um, there are, because I'm logged in here, I can't get fully back to the old, to kind of the retro look. We've got areas where you can manage the ordering and you can put comments on. But essentially this is sort of your old fashioned series of results. And now I'm going to click a, sort of a more meaningful term. I search on a more meaningful term, I'll do a Canon um, 50D camera, okay? Except this keyboard, I keep missing the space key. Okay, so here's a, uh, here's a sort of a more up-to-date version of search. And what you'll see is we've blended, so you obviously you have you've ads, of course, but then you've got, um, and, and we can't see them all because the resolution on the screen is a little bit low, but basically we've got video results, we've got shopping results, because we've scored them and we've decided, well, you know what? that you might be interested in a video. So, but we think you're about this interested in the video and you're about that interested in, um, in shopping results. But what I'm gonna do is, you know, as I was saying, more and more information is coming onto the web, so you need more control. So if you look up here, you have this little show options. And so that'll bring up some options. And now as a user, you know, I'm a lot savvier, I know what I want. Um, and so I'm gonna modify these results. And so I'm actually looking to buy a camera. And so let's, Check, click on reviews. And I might say, well, actually I want to review in the, in the past week, okay? And so, so I've got a series of reviews. And so that's before I buy, but I, I know I'm, okay, that's fine, these are some reviewers, this is what they've said. Let's maybe go to some forums and let's see what people say typically after they buy. What did Chewy, when he finally logged in, what does he have to say about this camera or this video game or whatever it is? But the layout here for me is not, not ideal. I'm just seeing, you know, a little bit of text here. So why don't I um, get some more text? And I can just say click more text. And then now I can see, okay, you know, basically you can, can then read a little bit about these, these, um, these forum posts before maybe you go into them. Maybe that's just good enough like that. You can do all sorts of other things like you can sort by date, show image on the page, all these kinds of things. Okay, did I see a question? Or was that a stretch? That was a stretch, no problem. <laughs> okay, um, and so that's, so that's basically a look at um, search options. Now I'm gonna show you a, a different take on search, which some of you may have seen and you may not have. It's called Google Square. And so that was, what that search was, was basically you were looking at elements, <coughs> single, single elements that would, would, would match your query, okay? And we can organize them in all different ways. You can show a movie, you can show a forum post, review, et cetera. But what we're gonna do here is, this is a, a project to actually go, and this is an experiment. As I said, this is all, uh, the idea of launching early and getting it in front of our users. The, the idea here is Squared goes out and it looks across the web and it builds you up what we call a square, essentially a grid with different attributes on the element that you're searching on. So let me make it a little more tangible. I'm gonna search for, um, you know, something uh, really highbrow here. I'll go with dancing movies, if I can find the space key. Perfect. Okay, so it's going out and it's searching and it's grabbing, you know, based on, based on this, like, what, what does a dancing movie mean to it? And so what it's done is, this is not structure, right? We have gone out and we have you know, looked in our index, looked on the web, and determined that these are the attributes that dance movies on the internet have in an unstructured way when you look at all the data in aggregate. And so essentially, here's the item name, okay, the movie name. Here's some images, here's a description, the running time, the release date, language, et cetera. And so just as an experiment, I'm gonna ask somebody, um, just if we have volunteer, what is your favorite dance movie? Um, on the end, you looked first. Put you on the spot, what's your favorite dance movie? Fame? You know, that's the first time anybody's ever said fame. Because <laughs> the answer that, that I always get um, is, especially when you put something in the spot, it's always dirty dancing. But um, we, can, we can do that. Um, so I'm actually gonna see what we have here. And I guess fame is actually not coming up as a, as a because it's a more generic term, it's not coming up as a movie. Was there a longer name for fame? Was it like fame the movie or? Dirty dancing, we have, di okay, we have dirty dancing, but we can put Havana Nights for you, okay? Which is Dirty Dancing 2, okay? So it didn't show up, because uh, Dirty Dancing was already higher in the results. And so I'm gonna look for Havana Nights, it goes out, it queries that, and it looks on a whole bunch of different websites for, you know, Havana Nights. Uh, and then you can look at, well, well, where did this data come from, right? 
So if, if you look here, you can see where we're getting the, um, the items. And so this is the running length of the Vanna Nights. It was not a sweeping epic. It was an 86-minute movie. Um, and so you could click on here, and you could see, well, where are these, where's this information coming from? And so it's coming from um, the, the Denver Post. I, I guess we had gone through, scraped the pages, and extracted that, that in fact, it was an 86-minute running time. That was the attribute. And then you look down here, and then you see, OK, well, here's some other results from four sources. Uh, we'll give it listing as one hour. Perhaps that's a rounding or maybe special edition. And then here's a, here's a low confidence 105. And you can actually click through here, and you could look at um, you know, where's all this information coming from, and maybe you could kind of figure it out from there. And so this is a, just a different take on you know, how you might go about searching. As I said, an experimental project called Google Squared. You can just go to google.com slash squared. Okay. The next thing I'm going to go to is um, image search. Okay. And I'm going to just do a uh, look for a, just an iconic car. Okay. And so here is Porsche 911. And this is your standard, um, your standard just kind of image search. So we've gone through and we've looked for web pages and we pulled back a bunch of images. So you're looking for that. But let's say I want to have so this is, we've again added the options to this here, giving you more control. Let's say I just want to have, you know, large images, right? Okay, because I'm going to use them. Okay. Or medium images, and I can go around and do that. But what happens if I just want to have, well, I don't really care what size they but what happens if I want to have just red? So there I have red. And maybe I might want to have green. And so I can go with some green cars. And interestingly, I didn't know, do they make them in orange? They do. And so I've got that there. And so that's kind of cool. And so that's, again, an awful lot more complicated than it looks to try to map out, well, in fact, what is, like, if you look at this image, right, you've got orange in the middle here, but it's all black all around. And, and how is it that car is orange, right? And, and to figure all that kind of information out and look from there. Um, but then you'll see, you'll always have some things, and there's, a, there's some orange shoes, perhaps, Porsche inspired or something. I'm not really sure. Um, and so I'm going to do one more, OK? And so, I'm going to try one more query, which is I'm just going to search for a tiger. Okay? And so here's a tiger. And now there's a series of different types of, of tiger images. So there's some, some that's just sort of the, the, the results by relevance. I could go by photo. And so this is mostly the tiger image you saw. I could get clip art, want to get cute. Or I could do line drawings, and so there's tiger things. Or I could get face. And then I bring Tiger Woods. <laughs> because, of course, the, the, the tiger is a generic <coughs> word, right? And so the idea is that the user probably means the animal. And probably all of you thought that. that we'll talk about the animal. But when you're talking about face, it's pretty unlikely that you're going to be looking for the face of a tiger, right? And so, in fact, you probably are looking for tiger woods. And so that's an interesting take there. Now, um, let me show you. So, so we've talked about, um, talk about just regular search. I'm going to talk about um, street view a little bit here. And so let's. Let's look for, um, I'm going to look for camera shops in um, San Francisco. And I, this. I really cannot with this keyboard. OK. And I spelled a typo there, so we'll do that. Um, OK. And so here's some camera shops. And so um, this is your standard thing. You know, all of you probably seen maps. and. Um, and you've got then little pins on the businesses. Well, let's look at kind of an interesting feature. I'm going to go around the street. Actually, I'm going to find out where the camera store is. There it is. Let's bring up Street View. Okay. And so then there's Discount Camera Store, right? There's a picture of Discount Camera Store there on the street. And maybe I'll go and I'll push my luck here on this internet connection. I'm going to go see the Best Buy. See if the Best Buy will come up. And of course it won't. Um, the connection is a little slow here. Let me. Go back to discount camera if that'll come up. Search here. Bring up Street View. And I just wanted to show you one more thing about Street View. Oh, so there's the Best Buy. Anyway. Um, the other thing that's kind of neat, uh, another change we've introduced to Street View is this little pancake here. And you see, before in Street View, you had to use these little arrows. And now you can use um, this little pancake where it's trying to recognize where you want to go, right? So you're aiming at a building here, you're aiming at the street here building front, so let's bring that up, and then I'm going to zoom in, and then I'm going to have a shot of, of, of discount camera. So that's kind of the idea where we're merging commercial results in. This is a, a camera listing through the, the business center, um, and, and we're mapping it then to a street view picture, so then customers can find out, well, where is this old camera? What's the look of this place? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not going to go there. Maybe I'm going to go to the Best Buy, or maybe I like that place. And so that's really kind of merging all that data together, the idea of taking data from different sources. And so you're saying, well, that's a, an interesting 
example, but let's show me something in London. And so I'm going to say this weekend, I'm going to go uh, visit a friend of mine in Ealing. Okay? And, but I'm going to drive out there. And I don't know if any of you are from Ealing. The parking people there are, are some, they're not nice. And so I want to figure out, like, can I, can I drive out there? Can I park by, by his house? And so he lives on uh, Sunnyside Road in Ealing. Okay. They do not screen product managers for typing ability. Uh, side. Oh. Healing. So I'm going to do that. And now I'm going to come down. He lives right about here. And I'm going to do that. But then I'm going to then look around. Oh, there we go. See what the regs are here. <laughs> look at that. So, OK. So then I, I, if I go on Sunday, it's fine, or Saturday after four. Um, and so that's kind of cool, but that's just an idea of just taking all this information, getting the information together, and then organizing it, letting users kind of mix and match how they go with it. And, and so we find out that people use these things in really, really surprising ways. Okay, so then, um, so that's search, okay? And then you're going to say, well, what about ads, right? You've shown search, well, what are some different things? And so we're taking all these same ideas that we have in search, which are giving different types of search results, allowing users to find things in different ways, and we're bringing them in to, to ads as well. And so I'll, I'll bring up a query here. Uh, if I can, I apologize, I do have some connection problems here. Let's see, apparently. Reebok. I'm going to search for Reebok boxing gloves. Okay. And so, so the first thing you notice here is you've got a little, uh, little cluster. And if we bring that up, what you're going to see is you're going to see a whole bunch of different Reebok products. And so this is actually all an ad unit up in here. And so that's bringing you know, additional information, a richer kind of ad to, to users on, on this, clearly a commercial query. And so then you know, we're, we're continuing to bring out new and interesting types of ad formats. That are, that are also aligned with the primary goal, which is helping users find information. So they can find information using search results, you know, organic search results, or using advertising uh, search results. We want all of them to work together and so that what is presented on this page is of maximum value and uh, use to the, to the user. Um, and so that's that one. And I'm just going to bring up one other one that we have. Um, and this is just from, from the States, but I'm just going to show it here. And I searched for Chevy. These are kind of navigational ads that, that are drilling you down into, um, into, the, um, into the site. And for the last demo, I'm going to try something. You have to bear with me here because this is, again, an American <coughs> demo. And so I'm just going to connect, do that. And just so I'm, I'm going to give you a, from the US here, let me bring this up. Okay. And I'm going to try for Astro Boy, which is a movie that's coming out. And there we have an embedded trailer in an ad unit, which is actually really cool. Um, and so we'll bring that up, and then, and then so we're going to see the trailer right in the ad unit. So that's really interesting. Um, and I guess that is all for the demos that I had, a little whistle stop tour of, of ideas. What I wanted to do, and I don't always talk this fast, I wanted to try to get through these demos just to open up to Q&A you know, about the demos or about other ideas, um, <coughs> questions about how we, how we develop products at Google, how the kind of the innovation culture works. I'm just happy to open up the floor. Okay, so so that's that's a that's a good point. So the um, the product ad that I showed you was was using Google based data, and that's you and that's an advertising um, setting. So you're linking uh, Google based data into to your AdWords account, and then it would be displaying it in certain situ situations. Um, the question that you were asking, I think, was a deeper question on organic results. And it, in fact, the idea behind organic results is that we, it's all algorithm driven. And we strive to find the highest quality results for the user. And so other than, I mean, good practice as far as web design, that's basically making you know, things, laying them out in clear ways, um, you know, basically using good design practices would be 
really the, the, the best way to go ahead. And then also having you know, interesting content for users. As I said, the goal is to try to maximize that use. And so we really try to get away from, from anything where you know, if one person's doing one thing, then they're going to be higher than somebody else. Because actually what we want to do is we want to satisfy the user's query um, you know, in the best way that we can. Um, any, other, uh, any other questions? The search options on the, on the yes. top there, can you, what percentage are, are you clicking on them and can you optimize for those filters? Um, so what percentage is click, uh, clicking on them? That really depends on the, um, the, the type of the query type. And, um, off the top of my head, I don't know um, the search options. I do know on the image, image let me bring back the image. Um, and, and I, I believe that this is these play the same kind of thing. And so what you'll find a lot of times is that um, people that are refining is so you know a relatively limited percentage of, of, of people I I believe refine a lot. I, I'm not I can't remember the exact number the exact data. Um, some will refine a lot. Obviously it's a new feature, so there's some discovery that has to happen. Um, but what we do find is when people do click on the attributes, um, then they'll you know they'll, they'll often then um, maybe click through more or some other areas like that. These are some things that we're tracking. And this is a new product, a new development. So we're kind of always refining that. The next question was, can you optimize it? And sort of the results that I, the, the answer that I gave, um, the first question was the same. We try to, I mean, when we're trying to find those orange portions, we actually just want to find orange, orange portions. We don't, we really don't want to have, um, you know, any kind of boosts that are going to different sites. And so we really look for the highest quality. And so the, the answer is, you know, good web design principles, um, and, you know, that we, that we will, List on our site, um, those type of principles, and but but there's no real tricks. We certainly would not want there to be tricks where people can can suddenly you know do these little things with magic wand and, and, and the rating would come up. That's not the idea. The idea is to try to have um, users actually finding what they want. Right, right, and, and that's important. And so a lot of them are discovery based. And, um, and in fact, that's how the company you know, started, right? It wasn't like we did a bunch of billboards and things like that. Um, so the idea behind the elements is, and, and some of the things I showed here are quite new, right? And so these are not possibly they are in labs. I showed you one, the squares. I, I, say, I believe it's still in labs. So the idea is that initially, it's OK for there to be relatively low adoption on This is a testing ground, right? And we want to see how do users interact with these, with these elements, right? And so how do they? Um, um, you know, how much are they using it? Is this worth exposing in, in more detail? And so you'll see up at the top, right? I mean, it's just, you know, it's this obviously a simple thing, but like, well, I mean, you've got the, the regular top map, and then you've got the more, and then you have an even more. And so, so that kind of gives you an idea of, well, well, how does all that come out? Well, it's going to be, you know, we're trying to give the users what they want. And so these things, some of these here will be like the labs products. In fact, you can drill down further and you get into the labs products. So users will go in, they'll discover them, they might share them with friends, they might do some things like that. Um, if we see the products are, are really taking off and really are useful to users, then we'll kind of you know, show them more problems. Hi. Uh, mobile search is, is predicted to overtake fixed web search yes. in a few years. Yes. Uh, what are Google doing sort of in this area? Because obviously you've got your Google app for the smartphones, et cetera. But, right. uh, what kind of product developments around the corner? Okay, so I mean, the I was actually, and I, I'm not sure. I think we had a mobile session today, or, or we're doing one. I was gonna do, yeah, we have the device here. I was gonna do some mobile demos, but those are always gonna keep getting the camera right. So I'll just talk to that. Um, I think what we've seen is, the, you know, the increasing capabilities of of mobile devices, right? And so the iPhone was sort of the, the first device where people are using that. It's a real web browser, right? They're not just sending a text message and then, and then you know, kind of hoping and praying and going to a website. They're really using that as a web browser. And so as you see kind of the difference between these higher spec devices where you've got you know, a whole series of touch screen high spec devices coming out um, and, then, and then you've got more like medium spec or, or low spec, I think the idea that, you know, that we think is that, that everyone's get, you know, moving towards these higher spec, higher speed devices that are acting more like the desktop experience, but on a smaller um, scale. Um, obviously, there are, are different hardware attributes um, versus a computer. So you see, region, um, location-based queries are, are obviously more important, you know, on a mobile device. Things like orientation, right? And so, 
you know, basically you can pick up movements of the phone and you can go from there and you can, you can try to um, figure that out. Voice-based search is something that would be important on a mobile device, is not relevant on a, on a desktop computer. So sort of the same principles are present in mobile search as in, as in traditional um, desktop search, but they're just, they have certain behavior skews based on what people happen to do with mobile phones. And so it's sort of principles that I talked about there. But, but I would see over time, you know, with, you've got netbooks that are increasingly becoming smaller and cheaper. You've got high spec cell phones that are becoming uh, richer. There's certainly, the, at some point, there's not that much of a gap anymore. And you're looking more at a spectrum. And then you want to have, um, then you want to have the, the product kind of fit the need in each of those areas. But I, I, would, I guess I would break it down as screen size and, you know, do you take the device with you? or do you leave it at home? Um, do you use it on the go or do you use it at your desk? These type of elements, rather than breaking it down in a fixed, this is a mobile, this is a netbook, and this is a laptop, and this is a desktop kind of, kind of idea. Um, so yes. um, if you search for Google Webmaster Help for mobile, you've got a huge section of Webmaster Help talking about how to optimize content for mobile, how to deploy mobile content, how to tell us about it, and so on. So you've got it now, that's how it Cool, thanks, sure. I think, yeah, I think we're, that's a hint, we're out of time. Okay, great. Thank you very, very much indeed.